Hey guys, congratulations on your new Cyclone fifth wheel. I'm gonna walk you around and show you some of the basics on how to operate this new Cyclone fifth wheel. One of the first things we wanna do is turn on this power button in here, these battery disconnect switches. They have to be turned to the green position. If this isn't turned to the green position, these two battery switches, we won't have power to the coach. So all we do is turn those on, see how that's red? That turns it over to green, okay? Our hydraulics, our deep cycle battery that comes with the camper. To turn our front power jacks on when we're gonna on level, all we have to simply do is push both the arrows up and down. Notice the little green light indicator that comes on. Then we just simply hit auto level to auto level the coach in its entirety. When you're going to turn your propane tanks on, righty tighty, lefty loosey. Righty tighty shuts the tanks off, lefty loosey opens up the tanks. You have a, a split tank system, you've got a tank on either side. This is your docking center with your TV and your jack handle for the manual operation of your slides. This is your cable hookups, your city water connections here. We hook up a garden hose that we come through this inlet down in here for. This garden hose will uh, allow us to run water, bypass our tank. The inlet here allows us to dry camp when we wanna be hooked where water's gone into our tank. This is our exterior shower and this is our flush for our gray and black tanks. This switch over here will turn your pumps on and off to operate your pumps. Your valves are located up underneath in here. This is your valves for your gray and black tanks. Uh, they do discharge underneath here. Your three inch is your waist and your inch and a half is your um, gray tank. Okay, we're gonna scroll around here. This is your hot water heater. Really nothing you have to do with your hot water heater here. I'll show you the inside of it, but Really the hot water heater has a plug um, and then pressure relief valve, auto ignition board. Again, nothing you really have to contend with outside here. Everything actually happens from the inside of the camper from the in-command station. So outside furnace exhaust, keep the little ones away from that. Another sewage tank uh, rinse back here. Additional valves for the rear tank, which is located underneath here. Your two hookups for your fuel tanks uh, back here to turn your pump on, simply hit hit the on button. It dispenses from the nozzle, which is located behind this door right here. You do have a 25 foot 50 amp power cord. We do give you the electrical adapters to go convert from 50 to 30 amp, as well as the 15 amp. These pins here on the ladder, you simply pull those pins, the ladder will swing down. It is rated at approximately 250 pounds. To put down our rear door, all we have to simply do is pull these handles out. They will swing around. When our door is in a horizontal position with the cables attached, that allows it to be in the patio position. When the cables are detached, that'll allow it to swing right to the ground. Your stairs are located in this little compartment here. Your keys are located around the faucet. Your stairs fold up into the side. I'm just gonna kind of walk you around the outside of this. This is our stove and external refrigerator. You do want to check your tires after the first 200 miles to make sure the lug nuts have not become loose. Your spare tire is located right underneath the camper here. All you have to simply do is twist and unlock that wheel and the spare tire will slide out of the rack. These are the low points for the fresh water lines. You want to make sure those are in a horizontal position. Currently in a vertical position, they've drained all the fresh water from the system, just so you're aware. Exterior TV. This is your bypass valve, which is located underneath here. You want to make sure that's in operation mode so that you can get water um, into the uh, hot water heater. If it's uh, in bypass mode and not normal operation mode, you will not get water in your hot water heater, which means you won't have hot water. This button right here is to put your main primary slide out so you can get into the camper when you first get to the campground, your jacks are down and you're ready to start setting up the camper. Then you'll operate everything else from the control panel. Your other tank located on this side, your solar hookups. This little valve back here indicates that you do have propane flowing into the line. The green is the indication there is propane. There's a little flip lever back here. Whichever direction that's flipped is the tank that it's gonna be drawing from. Okay, let's walk inside. We'll show you some of the basics on how to operate the rest of the camper. Switches on the wall do operate overhead lighting. Our main control center is operated from behind here. Switches for the overhead lights. This is our main control center, which operates our various appliances. Scroll this back home. 
will bring you to all the appliances, the various devices. All you have to do is push that. Awning, leveling, lighting, your slide out controls. Simply hit that, it'll bring you to the main slide outs. Plus means you're gonna extend it. Minus means you're subtracting it. Your solar charger and the operation of that. Your Yeti package is the additional tank heaters on your lines. All you have to do is simply push that to turn those on. To operate your thermostats, it's a real simple, straightforward toggle through. All you'll simply do is hit the power button. You'll hit the power button again to hit the fan. One more time to get, whoops, to get the snowflake. And then the up and down arrows will control temperature. If you hit it an additional time, it'll go to the furnace. And again, up and down to control the temperature settings. Inside your master bedroom, we've got a couple different hidden switches. We're gonna show you some things. One here on the side of the cabinet is our switch for a hidden TV. So in this TV bracket, you can mount a TV if you'd like. If you want to push that up and down, all you simply do is push that little switch right there. To operate your bed, the angle of your bed, there's a switch over there on the wall, and that operates the angle of your bed up and down. Your lights, do you have buttons in the center of the, these? If there's not a switch on the wall, this happens to have a switch on the wall or it controls your overhead lighting. To operate this air conditioner, same operation, push it multiple times, little snowflake up here, and air conditioning kicks on. You do have a ground fault plug over there in the bathroom that does have a breaker reset on it. If any of your 110 plugs are not working, simply push that in the center, it will reset the plug. You guys, to operate your fireplace, real straightforward. This is the power button on the far right hand side. This is a temperature setting, the color of the flames if you want to adjust the flames, and then of course the timer. Your stereo, I apologize, don't know too much about that. All your remotes for the TV and that are going to be located in the kitchen drawer. Your keys will be around the faucet. Microwave is pretty straightforward. To ignite our stove, all we do is turn it over to the little flame, hold this button in with, hold that in with that push on, and that will ignite your flame. Your vent fan that's operated above is from these switches right here. To operate a refrigerator, all we have to do is hit the power button. That'll turn it on. That's temperature setting. When you see the little plug, that means it's drawing power off the um, power, shore, not, shore power that we're plugged into. When you hit it again, that forces the little drop. The propane is operating. If you hit it to both of them, it's going to go to the most convenient power source, which when you're plugged in, it's going to go to electricity. Since we're plugged in, might as well draw it off our electricity and not use our propane gas. So real straightforward there. Okay, going in back here to operate our power beds up and down. Our controls are right there for our beds up and down. There are pins in all four corners. These pins in all four corners will keep the top bed up. If you want to release the top bed, you want to pull all four pins so that when you go to operate this, they'll both come down at once like you see right now. If you leave the top pins in all four corners in place, only the secondary bed will come down and then you fold the cushions back to make your dinette bench. When you are operating this, the glass sliding doors, it's important to note that the glass sliding panels do need to be in a down position when you're closing the panel in front of it so that the air pressure doesn't pop those panels out. So always make sure those panels are in this down position. This is your awning mat for those. These in both corners here are what are called ram airs. They do force fresh air into the camper. Simply squeeze, depress, and push out. That'll allow fresh air into the camper. This is your hookup back here for your washer dryer. And again, another thermostat for your um, third AC, which this camper has three ACs on. You guys, this is the basics on your brand new Cyclone 4006. But if you do have additional questions, please don't hesitate to ask. You can call me and reach me at 231-740-6225. Thank you for your business and I hope you enjoy your new RV.